Say, neighbor, there's nobody like our God. Come on, we're going to make one big worship team today. One more time, yell and say, there's nobody like our God. Come on, everybody, clap your hands right now. We can't take you the praise, huh, yeah. We can't take you the glory, and we can't take you the honor. Come on, let me see you clap your hands right here. Come on, one more time. The king is exalted and I, I will praise him. He is exalted. The king is exalted and I, I will praise him. You say, the king, the king is exalted and I, I will praise him. Come on, he is forever, forever. Say, he is Lord. He is Lord. Say, Lord. 
because I gave God a praise. This is not a this is not a put on, amen. But this is a come on, amen. Every time I think, I've got to thank. You. Tell somebody near you, say neighbor or neighbor. We've been on a steady rise, and now's not the time to go down. You tell somebody we came to give God praise. So let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And we got all day to do this. Hallelujah. I said, let everything that has breath praise you the Lord. Open your mouth, clap your hands real fast, and say thank you. Say thank you. Tell the Lord thank you for your goodness, for your mercy, for your wondrous works. You are good, and your mercy endureth forever, if it had not been. Oh, come on, church of the Neosia. Oh, me a son of the Neosia. If it had not been for the Lord, who was on my side. Look at somebody and say, where would I be? Where would I be? Where would I be? Where would I be? But thanks be unto God. Who continues to give us victory? <laughs> oh, I wish I had a. I said, Thanks be unto God who continues to give us victory. The last victory was not the last victory. But tell somebody there's a continuous victory that's been put on me. There's no defeat on me. There's no failure on me. Because I serve the great God Jehovah. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wonder who I can get that can give God a good new day praise. Hallelujah. He's good all the time. So I praise him all the time. Hallelujah. Why be thou disquieted in me? Tell somebody I have hope because he's still on the throne. The old church will sing a song that says, God is still on the throne. Within your bosom, we have a phone. Whenever you walk, you're not walking alone. God is still on the throne. Y'all know that? Y'all know that? Y'all know that? Amen. Let's do it for a little bit. Amen. God is still on the throne. Whenever you walk, you're not walking alone. God is still on the throne. Within your bosom, you have a phone. Whenever you walk, you're not walking alone. God is still on the throne. Come on, let's sing. Oh, oh, God is still on the throne. Within your bosom. You 
And causing new things to sprout up. You, have, you know those, 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 that hardware that farmers use to till the ground and open it up to put new seed in and wait for a harvest. Well, so it as in the natural, as it is in the spirit, as they use a till to open up the ground. I use praise to open up the ground. So I got something I want you to do. I want you to praise and speak at the same time. While your feet are moving, let your mouth move. And tell God what it is that you need from him as you till the ground and open it up for something to be put in. Take about 30 seconds and tell this crowd right here. And I mean drive it till the wheels fall off. of giving. Amen. Because giving is your key to access. Hallelujah. I said giving is your key to access. Amen. Hallelujah. Standing all over the room with that $25. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh! 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 There's a breakout in here. There's a breakout in here. Lassen, Dominique, I want you to dance. Dance.
is broken. The curse is broken. The curse is broken. The curse is broken. All right. Just be careful. Amen. While he's getting his, go ahead and bring, bring your offering. Bring your offering. I'm telling you. If you're giving electronically, Just one word. Y'all, amen. Amen. See, I don't apologize for this because this is what I prayed for. I prayed for a breakout. I prayed for a takeover. I prayed for an outpour. And that's what he's doing. He's pouring out right now. His spirit upon all flesh. Your flesh got to die for the poor to come. Amen. Let's receive our preacher for the hour. The overseer, Rayshawn L. Wilson. Come on, give God a praise.
testify to two or three people that may not be standing too far away from you. You just tell your neighbor, this is a good day for an outpour. This is a good day. It's a good day for an outpour. Hallelujah. If you really believe that all across this sanctuary, will you lift your hands and open up your mouths? And for just 60 seconds, will you just give God the fruit of your lips? Come on, all across this room. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. We give your name praise. We give your name honor. We give your name glory because there's none like you in all the earth. You are our king. You are our everything. And for that reason, we honor you even on the Sabbath. And we thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for your anointing and your spirit. Thank you for your presence. Move how you want to move in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, as you are standing on your feet, and I promise I do not endeavor to keep you long, I do have something to say, but it is not a lot to say. And I am trained to only say what God says and then be seated. And that is what I will do today. But before I move further, I want to pause to take a moment and to celebrate this visionary, but I would that you oblige me and let's not clap out of religious obligation, but let's celebrate a visionary to whom which I believe is not gathering us together just for the sake of having an event. I believe that he has gathered us together and has called us to assemble because God has led him to do so. And the proof in that is that heaven has been responding since the first night, and I know that God is not done yet. I've known him for so, 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 so many years. I still remember when he was just Minister Dejan. I remember not being able to make a few engagements many years ago and asking him to go for me because I believe in him. and strength with both faith and power and I'm grateful for the visionary of this outpour Pentecost experience help me celebrate our host this evening Elder Dejon Brown I honor you come on you can do so much better than that amen I want you to know that I'm godly proud of you and I am so excited about your future and that is sincere. Listen, there are several individuals here that I do want to acknowledge and to celebrate. And I want to uh, ask you to help me to honor them. If I can remember, I'll go in ascending order. So help me thank God for Pastor Kristen Baker from Columbia, South Carolina. My dear sister, help me thank God for Pastor Aaron Hicks from right here in Charleston. South Carolina. Help me thank God for Bishop Elect Barry Tolbert. That has a nice ring to it. Bishop Elect. Help me thank God for Bishop Gardner right here on this front row. We honor you, sir. And in the back, one of my longtime friends, we want to thank God and celebrate God for Bishop Lance Jetter from Florence. Amen. I want to thank God for our executive pastor at Impact City Church. Help me thank God for Pastor Donald Joaquin. And if you don't mind, will you take a moment and help me celebrate the Lord for my wife? Can you thank God with me for Lady Deshauna? And a portion of Impact City Church is hanging out with me, and a few of them went with me to Augusta, Georgia last night. And we didn't get back until almost sunrise. And I don't know, I don't know what kind of energy drink they got, but they were all up before me. But I do appreciate you all for being here. Thank you all so much for your love and your support to uh, the amazing um, uh, house band, to these musicians, some of them who serve with me weekly. And you guys, y'all know y'all are family, so I love y'all. It's so good to see you. As you remain standing, grab your Bibles. If you all give me about 18 minutes, 
I'll be out of your way. Um, let me tell you, <clears throat> Manny, you don't think I can do it in, in 18 minutes? Okay. Okay. You know, Thomas didn't think that he had resurrected either, you know. But, but I want you to just, I'm not going to stir you. I got, just, if you don't mind, just, just look at two or three people and tell your neighbor, but God's getting ready to give me proof in this next season. All right. You don't have to believe I'm going to be successful. You don't have to believe I'm going to finish the book. You don't have to believe I'm going to start the business. You don't have to believe I'm going back to school. You don't have to believe I'm going to attain a degree. Just keep your eyes on me. Y'all don't believe it. Prophesy to three people. Look at them eyeball to eyeball and tell them proof is coming. Proof. Proof. He's going to prove the doubt is wrong. And we're giving praise. Book of Acts, the second chapter. Um, I do want to encourage you all to support all of the vendors. I wasn't tasked for that, but many of them are my friends. And so I want to encourage you all to support them. Sister Moore, if you want your bags to be big, I want you to stop by. I want you to stop by. Listen, because it's going to do it and it's going to be good. Um, I affectionately call him my nephew. Y'all know Jimmy. In fact, I've got on jimmy's frames and and if you need prescription i know some of y'all wear fashion glasses i gotta have what we used to say medicine in them i gotta have medicine in my glasses amen so i thank god for him and uh, I, I like good pictures so if you need a photographer chris everett is that guy right chris everett is that guy So, 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 so many more vendors. Uh, please support them. Acts 2, I'm going to consider just four verses of reading for your hearing. Uh, start my timer once I begin my intro, okay? <laughs> Acts 2, Acts 2. Now, this is a very, very familiar passage of scripture. However, I would that you not allow the familiarity of the text to hinder what God would have to say in this moment. This is not a, a sermon that I flip through a three-ring binder to find. This is what the Lord has given me for this particular hour. <clears throat> and uh, it is more prophetic than sermonic, so just bear with me. It is going to be hermeneutically sound, although it may not be homiletically round, if, 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 that, if that makes sense. You understand? All right. And I'll sharpen my presentation at another time. You understand, right? Acts 2, verses 14 through 17. Listen to this. But Peter, standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is about the third hour of the day. Here it is, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out. A pour out is an outpour of my spirit upon all flesh. And your son and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall dream my apologies your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams I I I, I have a subject um, but I would like to use a subtopic also I'm normally not a subtopic type of individual but I want to speak from the subject, the consequences of an outpour. And I'll save my subtopic until we get to the exit where we will go to Hoopville. Um, you may be seated. Bless this food that we're about to receive. Oh God, let it be a nourishment to this body. By your hands we all are fed. Give us this afternoon our daily bread. In Jesus' name, amen. Sisters and brothers, at the onset of this particularly brief discourse, Pastor Kristen, let me begin by uh, sort of uh, exegeting my primary topic, the consequences of an outpour. Will you oblige me and say that with me? Say the consequences 
Some of you didn't say it in the back. Come on, say the consequences of an outpour. Now, by definition, uh, there are uh, a couple different perspectives of the word consequence. First and primarily, it is the result or effect of an action or condition. It is the result or effect of an action or condition. If we were to take a closer look to examine this particular word consequence, in uh, Old French from Latin, it is the Latin word consequentia. Would you oblige me? Just say that with me. Say consequentia. That's where we get the English word consequent, and it simply means following closely. Which means in all actuality, there is no outpour if nothing is following you after the pour out. Something is wrong, Bishop Elect Talbert, when we gather together and we sweat off of our, we sweat out our wigs and our suits and our lashes and our makeup and our clothes, but nothing is following us. After we leave the meeting wherein we attended. Now, for the sake of you not believing this is philosophy, I did bring scriptural reference. The Bible says, and these signs uh, shall follow. See, that's a consequence. These signs shall follow them that believe. Which would mean then that belief is the cause. Signs are the consequences. In fact, the Bible not only said signs, it says signs and wonders. I think the problem with this generation is that some of you are trying to be a wonder when God called you to be a sign. Something should be following you so that we can identify your sign. Not your zodiac, but your sangue. The thing that makes you significant. Your sign. The thing that gives you a signature. Your sign. The thing that causes you to operate under an anointing that absolutely, positively nobody else can operate in. There is a consequence that God wants to give you, but the consequence is the repercussion of a particular condition. I'll give you a particular example that I'd like for you to use, and I'm actually almost done. In Mark 4, we see something that I think we cannot overlook without some concern. Jesus is on a boat. Boats represent situations, right? Uh, ships represent circumstances like relationships and friendships and situationships. Jesus is on a boat. Boats represent situations. We know that because if you have no money and if I have no money and if I tell you you have no money, you're going to look at me and say we're in the same boat because boats represent situations. So Jesus gets on this situation and now they are in transition. They are moving from one side of this particular sea to the other side. All right. They are trying to go over this particular river. I don't want to sound insensitive, but if you really want to qualify for the next outpouring in the earth, there are going to be things that you simply have to get over. And if you can't get over, you at least have to go through. God is releasing a grace for you to appropriately heal from everything that has the potential or propensity to stop you from getting to the other side. And I want you to know that it is God's will for you to grow up in him to the point where you can ask him for a grace to surround you with people who will push you to get over some stuff. I don't want to be connected to people who will allow me to waddle and to and to sit here and 10 years later you are still broken and busted over the same thing talking about the same story whining but calling it a testimony. God says no I want to surround you with people who will put a fire under you that will remind you that there is a future for you that is bigger than your past. Jesus is on his way Bishop Jeter and he falls 
falls asleep. Now, I need you to hear me because Jesus understands, Tiffany, that rest is a weapon against any upcoming storm. Can I tell you something that you may disagree with, but uh, perhaps we can talk about it at Waffle House after Overseer McLaren finishes tonight? The reality is that the devil is trying to wear some of you out, <laughs> but Bishop, his trick and his tactic is to wear you out with success. <laughs> okay, wait, stop, rewind, play. Do you have a quarter? I want to put it in the meter and park here. You got to be careful <laughs> because all success is not ordained by God. <laughs> and sometimes the devil will put a doorknob on distraction and you will think that's ordination. <laughs> oh, Manny, I might need to borrow those five minutes extra because uh, remember the Bible says in Joshua uh, that he will make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. Uh, if the adjective good there describes that kind of success, the inference then is that there is a success that might be good to you but not good for you. Uh, and I know that we've picked up this spirit in the earth it is a toxic spirit talking about I'll rest when I die no you gotta learn that you cannot do everything and that's the reason why some of you have writer's block I have no idea how I got here I know but I sense that we're in a room full of creatives and you should have produced another project by now you should have written another song by now but you've been so worn out being successful in other areas Okay, y'all don't like that. I promise, I promise. Just give me five minutes extra. Hear me, hear me. Y'all remember when Saul killed his thousands. Y'all remember when David killed his tens of thousands. Y'all remember when Solomon built the temple. Okay, stop, rewind, play, run the tape back. Saul killed his thousands. David killed his tens of thousands, but Solomon built the temple. How come Saul didn't build the temple? Because he was busy getting victims. How come David didn't build the temple? Because he was busy getting victory. Solomon had enough wisdom to know if I continue to fight, I'm going to get victory but no productivity. Some of y'all got victory but no productivity. And God said in this season, I know you were taught to keep your sword in your hand and fight on. But I came to release an anointing in this house that in this next season, you're going to be able to put down your sword and pick up your hammer. Touch three people and tell them I'm building I'm bu every time you see me what are you doing building how come I didn't see you at the outing because I was building why you gotta go and leave the restaurant so early because I'm building and I wonder can I talk to 50 of you that's gonna scream at me only if you get it and it makes sense not only am I building I need that volume back I think I lost some can I get that back not only am I building but you may not know what I'm working on and I know some of y'all want to work and move in silence but thank you but I'm releasing an anointing that's gonna cause you to win out loud can you touch five people and tell them I'm getting ready to win out loud if you saw me when I was going through you getting ready to see me when I come out if you saw me when my car got repossessed you getting ready to see me when I pull up in the range row scream at somebody and tell them everybody's gonna see this next one I'm almost done. He's moving across. Hear me. He's moving across and he falls asleep. He gets rest because he knows that in order for my creativity to be recharged, I got to rest. Some of y'all are not under attack. You just need to go to sleep. Talking about the devil fighting my body. You just sleepy. Go to sleep. Okay, hold on. Watch this. A storm arises. Yes, and the winds are blowing. The lightning is flashing the thunder is rolling the breakers are dashing they wake up Jesus you remember it don't you master carest thou not if we perish Jesus wakes up and he does something then that I'm trying to explain to you now all right he says peace be still come a little closer he says peace comma Noah be still do you have a pen I just want to stick it in the skirt so we don't hem the dress too high he says peace Peace, comma, be still. He says, peace to the wind, and then be still to the waves. Wait, come here. He has to rebuke the cause before he can speak to the effect. 
he has to address the condition before he can deal with the consequence he said because some of y'all are trying to get the waves in your life to calm down when the reality is the problem is not the waves the problem is the wind so I want to know what wind have you been allowing to blow you up this alley because the reason I've got to ask is because the truth of the matter is that there's a cause yeah look at somebody tell them there's a cause something is causing you to act like you act something is causing you to have a nasty attitude you didn't wake up in the morning and say I'm gonna have a nasty attitude today something caused that you didn't wake up in the morning and say I'm gonna just drop out of school today something caused that y'all still quiet huh you didn't wake up in the morning and say I'm gonna be a hope well you know I don't know what you woke up in the morning and said but uh, but tell your neighbor you got to deal with the cause uh, something has been driving you uh, to be out of the will of God uh, something has been driving you uh, to seek temporary satisfaction uh, uh, so you got to deal with the cause tell your neighbor you got to deal with the cause uh, thank you for enduring my lecture I've successfully arrived to the text uh, there is now an outpouring that we see in Acts 2 uh, and it is something that we cannot overlook without some concern the Bible says that the disciples have gathered together they are in the upper room Kells it is now an attic it's an elevated place they and they are gathered together waiting on an outpour they are not there watching their clocks they are not there eating cracker jacks and potato chips but their Mashiach but there is a seek before they get to the room can I tell you one of the reasons why worship leaders have to sweat out their unit they just got the install two weeks ago but the reason why they got to work so hard sometime is because some of y'all wait till you get to the attic but you got to start seeking before you get here can you just nudge your neighbor and tell your neighbor I thank God for a personal revival no baby I'm prophesying and some of y'all missing it if you wait until you get to the sanctum sanctorum if you wait until you get to the sanctuary if you wait until you get to the tabernacle to give God glory you're gonna miss the greatest move every time don't know who I'm talking to but I grew up old school so Lavetta, I wonder is there anybody in this room who can remember when you were getting dressed for church on Sundays you didn't start in praise and worship you started at Bobby Jones Cathedral oh God I guess I'm the only one taking your shower singing yes Lord singing hymns all the way to church pulling up to the that, that's why I don't like this quiet church because something happens when you pull up to the church and when you open the door you can hear the songs of Zion because we don't start once we get in the temple in fact you ought to touch two people and tell them I don't wait until I get to the attic to praise him I start when I'm on my way is there anybody that's been through enough hell and high water that can say I praise God even in Walmart walking down aisle 10 trying to find the cereal because when I think of the goodness of Jesus I know some of y'all think it's a cliche but let me try it like this when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he didn't do because I was on my way to a burning hell he should have killed me but he didn't he should have let me die in my mess but he didn't I gotta get out of here that's the reason why my testimony in this season is Lord whatever you're doing in this season wait wait do it without me because if I put my hand in it I might mess it up if I put my hand in it I'm gonna cuss them out if I put my hand in it I'm gonna tell your neighbor I want God to do it without me the Bible says that they are there and something happens an outpour happens when the outpour happens y'all I'm done like in like three minutes or something like that five minutes something like that when the outpour happens the Bible says oh wait wait come here that folk were confused yeah they were confused because they couldn't figure out 
uh, hear me. They really weren't confused about the outpour. Oh my God, this is prophetic. You can look. This wasn't on my notes right here. This no, no, this wasn't on my notes. But I need to. I need to. They weren't confused. I just gotta slow down to say this one part. I'm gonna jump back on the train in a minute. They weren't confused by the outpour because 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 they had already heard of the mysteries of Yahweh. They had already heard that he had delivered their ancestors. Pillar of fire by day, cloud by day, pillar of fire by night. They had already heard of all of the plagues. So this outpouring in the attic, that wasn't confusing to them. Hear me, hear me. The thing, but just tell y'all that's going to get this. Chris, I hope it makes sense and blesses you. The thing that confused them was not the outpour, it was the conduit. Okay, wait. Okay, hold on, wait. Wait, wait. In other words, we're not confused because God is moving in that room. We're not, we're not, we're not baffled because God is moving and he's, he's pouring out. The thing that is confusing us is why is he choosing those people? to pour out through. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Can I tell you the reason why hell is mad at you is because the devil can't figure out. Now he's seen God move because he's been around for a minute. He's seen God move but he can't figure out why is God moving through you. Because he remembers when he got kicked out of heaven he only had a thought. The Bible says in Ezekiel that he thought in his heart to overthrow the throne of God. He never overthrew the throne. He only had a meditation and God got rid of him but some of y'all got blunt stains on your fingernails and God had used you so the devil scratching his head because he can't figure out why would God use them for an outpour and I want to know is there anybody in this room besides me that can say I'm just so grateful that in spite of all of my shortcomings okay that's fine I know I'm in the wrong room I know y'all don't have shortcomings I know but I'm talking about me not you is there anybody besides me that can say I'm just so grateful that now when I hear the song it has a different meaning that he looked beyond all of my faults and he saw my need but there was a man by the name of Dejan I'm sorry a man by the name of Peter who stood up with the rest of them and said I need to proclaim something to you he said watch this for these are not drunk as ye suppose which means they are drunk but not under the influence like you think hear me if he says these are not drunk like ye suppose that means it is possible for them to have been under a different influence my question before I get off this exit and we swing from a few chandeliers is this what has been influencing you because you want to know what I've learned some people are not under the influence of the Holy Ghost you might be inebriated you might be intoxicated but it doesn't mean that it is the influence of the Holy Ghost some of you are under the wrong influence and nothing is worse than being vulnerable and then you got a witch in your air did you hear what I tell you that's why you got to make sure you guard your air because some of y'all think you hearing from God but you're really hearing from a cauldron hearing from a coven of witches and and here's what the Bible says there's safety in the multitude of counsel that doesn't mean that you just go to any and everybody because I'm so sick and tired of people saying you know I after much counsel I believe I'm gonna leave my church that's fine if you want to go but my question is who's the counsel because even though you sat under counsel if it is the Messiah if it is not godly counsel people will talk you out of your destiny and some of you gotta be careful because there are people who will tell you to leave and then they will stay or they will tell you to stay and they will leave I can't get no help some of the people telling you child you shouldn't keep working on this job they only want you to 
believe so they can take your place and here you are binding up a devil meanwhile the devil is up under a hut on a beach selling jet skis and drinking a pina colada he ain't even stunned you tell your neighbor you gotta you, you better be careful yes because it's possible some of y'all are under a spell right now yeah it's a word curse I heard I I, I saw a meme y'all I'm getting ready to close flight attendants secure the cabin we're reducing altitude and I can see the runway up ahead I I I I I, I saw a meme and the meme said Christians don't curse actually no 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 I stand corrected the meme said Christians don't cuss okay now what I thought when I read it I said well I know a few Christians who cuss Christians don't curse because see there's a difference in cursing and cussing Peter cussed oh y'all don't want this I know I'm gonna get in trouble now if I know because you know about Peter cussed you see but some of you have been under a curse it's a word curse that's the reason why the witches put a spell on you because the only way you can identify a word is if you spell it y'all ain't saying nothing to me so every time somebody called you stupid they were putting a spell s-t-u-p-i-d spell on you it's a word curse and i've come for every devil my y'all i feel a sanctified anointing here i said i come for every curse i come for every spirit that's been trying to bind your destiny and i've come to pull it off for you in other words god's getting ready to make you sober you're getting ready to make you sober so you can get back to your first love get ready to make you so because I'm trying to figure out what have you been waiting on to sing on that praise team you've been drunk what have you been waiting on to produce that project you've been drunk what have you been waiting on to get on the intercessory prayer team they've been drunk but God's come to make you sober he said this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel and what I love I'm deploying landing gear it's getting ready to get crazy what I love about uh, Dr. Luke who is the author of Acts is that Dr. Luke says that this is a prophecy and then he names the prophet he said this is that which was spoken of there is no confusion we know this one didn't come from Isaiah this one came from Joel can I tell you one last thing before I close and leave y'all this afternoon sisters and brothers you got to learn how to name some of these prophets because some of them are lying and you don't name them but you got to name them how you gonna tell me that I, y'all ain't saying nothing I, I went I don't want to get in trouble but I, I went to a church I won't call the church's name but I went to a church and I, in my rush I left my wedding band at the hotel and I'm standing in the service and the man of God says step out in the aisle so I stepped out in the aisle he says lift your hands so I lifted my hands and he said God said to tell you he's getting ready to send you a wife at the time I had been married nine years so I was a little confused y'all ain't saying nothing here and I want to tell you that God's releasing an anointing in this generation that some of y'all are going rise up and say we're not playing with the devil no sir y'all ain't saying some of y'all let people prophesy stuff to you that ain't got nothing to do with you now I'm not talking about an absence of understanding because I do know that sometimes prophets speak ahead but if you're gonna tell me God sending me a wife are you telling me my current wife getting ready to die y'all ain't saying nothing here scream at your neighbor and tell your neighbor you got to know the names of the prophet because I want to know who prophesied that your business wasn't gonna make it we gotta start calling their names we gotta start saying it was my aunt Julie who said I was never gonna get this house but I got it you can't come to the house woman but just know I got it we gotta say it was Pastor Bob who said that it would never be successful 
he sure did but look at the pictures we're not inviting you to preach but it is successful he said in the last day that God will pour out of his spirit in other words he said I'm going to begin to use you because uh, some of you when you think of the word outpour you were thinking of the heavens opening up and you were thinking of of something coming down from glory and you are thinking of something coming through the atmosphere and the stratosphere and the ozone layer oh lord but i want you to know that it is not coming from up down but instead it is coming from inside up tell your neighbor say hey their neighbor y'all ain't tuning with me now i said say hey neighbor tell them god is getting ready to give an outpour in the earth and it's going to come out of you y'all ain't talking to nobody i said tell your neighbor put the organ in the monitor i said say tell tell your neighbor that god is pulling something out of you this next outpouring is not thank you is not coming from the sky this next outpouring is coming from your belly out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water lean on your neighbor lean, 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 lean. lean on your neighbor lean on him for me and say neighbor you ought to get ready because there's a consequence of the outpouring don't pray for an outpouring if you don't want anybody to be healed don't pray for an outpouring if you don't want anybody to be delivered don't pray for an outpouring if you don't want anybody to be saved because when you pray yeah I said when you pray God will move and I want to prophesy to you as I go to my seats and we'll see some of y'all at fire I want to tell you everything you've been through in your life everything you've been through in your child everything you've been through in the old time that God was getting ready to use you for a time such as this for the hour will come in and now is God is gonna raise up conduits that are open he's gonna use you when you're in Walmart he's gonna use you while you're in Starbucks he's gonna use you no matter where you go in this next hour the move of God it will not be contained to the four walls when we show up here we're only showing up to be empowered we're only showing up to be infused we're only showing up to be ignited but the real move is gonna be outside of the confines of these four walls that's why when Jesus was born he was not born in the confines of a hotel because if he was born in the midst of four walls the walls would have burst in. he had to go outside so that the atmosphere can make room for him. and I want to prophesy that's what's getting ready to happen in your life God is going to cause room for you because the outpouring is coming then you push two people tell them make room make room y'all ain't saying nothing tell them make room make room pick up your sticks let's go maybe y'all don't like 
that key. So tell somebody else. Tell them, get ready. You got to make room for me. I'm going to need room because I'm going to prophesy like I ain't never prophesied before. I'm going to need room because I'm getting ready to lay hands like I ain't never laid hands before. I know what the problem is. Some of y'all in here, you think you're not qualified. Some of y'all in here, think God ain't going to use you. Some of y'all in here, think you messed up too much. Some of y'all in here, pick up your keys, G, and let's go a little further. But I want you to lean on your neighbor. Look at them eyeball, eyeball to eyeball, and tell them neighbor, this is not about, come on, Lucy, and talk to your neighbor. Tell them this is not about your pastor. This is not about your bishop. This is not about your apostle. But God, pick up your heart, let's go, wants to use you. Point at somebody, tell them it's you. He wants to use you without your title. He wants to use you. So you're not a missionary. So you're not ordained an elder. So you're not consecrated as a bishop. Pick up your heart, let's go. So you're not affirmed as an apostle. So so you're not walking around with a long robe. God still wants to use you for the outpour. And get out of your season. Tell two people, y'all ain't moving. I said, get out of your season. Go find two or three people and tell them I might not be as clean as you. Up before. I know I got blunt stains on my fingernails. I know that I got cigarette on my breath. I know that I've messed up. I know I got baby mamas. I know that I had not been perfect. But I'm glad that God has decided. Turn your base up to use me for the outpour. Get ready. Something is coming out of your spirit. And when it comes, you're going to be able to lead your children to the law. You're going to be able to walk in the hospital and lay hands on the sick. When the outpour, when it comes, you won't be able to lay hands on the demonic, demonically possessed, and tell the devil, you coming out today, it's the consequences of an outpour. Tell three people, I am not drunk. I said, tell three people, I am not drunk. Suppose, but that's what he said, and I'm going to Messiah. He said that your young men are going to have visions, but your old men are going to dream dreams. I said, Your young men are going to have vision, but your old men are going to dream dreams. You have a dream when you're asleep. So, what he's saying is that the anointing that was on ancestors they're asleep but they still got a dream and their dream will be our vision they had a dream that we would rise up and lead the church now that's our vision they had a dream we would be missionaries now that's our vision they had a dream that we would operate with an anointing that will send the devil a text message tell the devil that yokes 
shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Tell three people there's an outpour coming out of my spirit. There's an outpour coming out of my spirit. And when it comes, cancer will go into remission. And when it comes, AIDS will have to dry up. And when it comes, COVID will have to dry up. Tell God, yeah. Tell God, yeah. come to tell you all I come to tell you is that if you have been experiencing the anointing of God in this room over the course of these last few days Holy Ghost sent me to tell you it's not going to stop here but there's a consequence that's going to follow I need you to touch three people and tell them something's following behind me something come on here in fact you want to touch five people and tell them something is coming, something is. Y'all don't believe it, huh? I said, y'all don't believe it, huh? I said, y'all don't believe it? I'm closing. Can, can, I, can, I, can I get 30 more seconds? Can I? Grab your neighbor. I said, grab your neighbor. It's my church, but it's your conference, so I'm you the host. I, I'm, I, I submit to you. Grab your neighbor, grab him by the forearm, and tell him, neighbor, come on, tell him, neighbor, oh, neighbor, I don't know how long you've been where you've been. Tell him, I don't know how long you've been where you are. But tell him, get ready. you to deeper debt. He gonna pick you up. He gonna turn you around because you're needed. They need you. I quit. I need about 500 of you to open your mouths and just shout out Paul. Come on, say it out, Paul. Hey, say it out, Paul. Say it out, Paul. Out, Paul. On my family, on my children, on my aunts and uncles, nieces and nephews. As for me and my Hepa Shapa, Repeto Shapa. As for me and my house, it's gonna get on them for the last time. Tell your neighbor if you get close to me, tell them if you tell them if you get close to me, tell them if you come close to me when the outpour comes out of me, it's gonna get on you. You may not be a prophet, but if you come close enough, when I prophesy, you gonna prophesy, when I preach, you gonna preach, when I lay hands, you gonna lay hands, it's a proximity anointing, it's a proximity anointing, say yeah, say yeah, yeah, Touch three people, tell them it's contagious. It's contagious. You think I went through all of that hell? Give me some more in the house. You think I went through all of that hell just to go through? No, baby, when I come out, when I come out. Hear me, everybody standing, I'm done. I 
took the long way to tell you there's a consequence because I want you to be warned. Hear me? They call, you can shout and dance and speak in tongues about an outpour all you want. But I need to warn you that if an outpour comes, bodies will be healed. My God, I wish I had a huh. wake up in that corner. I said, look at somebody and tell them there's a consequence here. There's a co- that if an outpour comes, uh, huh, demons are gonna come out. Huh. I gotta warn you. I gotta warn you huh, that if an outpour comes, uh, huh, yeah. Oh! I took my shabba. If an outpour comes, lives are gonna be changed. All right. I need you to do me one thing, one favor, and then I'm going to my seat. I know it's a little warm. Welcome to Charleston. I know it's a little warm. But you know what we say all the time is some of us been in hotter places than this. You remember sweat, sweat all in your eye. But I need you to do me a favor, everybody. How many bodies? I know it's warm, so you don't have to touch anybody's hand, because I know your hands are wet, and that might be uncomfortable. But if you don't mind, can you find somebody and put your hand on their shoulder? If you can use two hands, that's fine. But if you hot, hold your fan in one hand and put the other hand on somebody else's shoulder. Because I want to make, thank you, I want to I wanna make sure that you all understand what I'm saying. He says that the young people are going to see visions. A vision is what you see when you're awake. He said, the old men shall dream dreams. A dream is what you have when you're asleep. The word asleep in the Bible does not refer to taking a nap. It refers to death. So in essence, the real power of an outpour is when the dreams of our ancestors who sleep become the vision of those of us who are alive. What some of y'all are trying to do is you're, you're, you're trying, trying to create your own new thing. And everything that the old saints taught us wasn't wrong. Now, some of it may have been, you know, but we live and we learn. But, but we can't dismiss everything. Because if we dismiss devotional service, how are some of our children going to learn the songs of Zion? If we dismiss hymns, how are some of our nephews and nieces going to learn the hymns of the church? So we've got to take the dreams of the ancestors and then creatively and innovatively present vision for our generation. And from there, we will see outpour. That's why the power of God has been so great in this room. If you could, I know you would have had an LED wall, but you got screens, you got trust stands, you got lights, you got a smoke machine. That's innovation. That's creativity. That's the vision of the youth. But you singing songs from the dreams of the old. Y'all ain't. That's what creates an emoshi under the bahoba. We call it the ancient future. Or oh, y'all ain't. Homashaya. Y'all, I got to get out of here because I know y'all got to go to lunch. I want you to take 90 seconds. I want you to take 90 seconds and I want you to pray for the person whose shoulders you're holding. You hear me what I'm telling you? I want you to pray. If you don't know what else to say, just say, God, I call forth an outpour. You are holding the shoulders of somebody who's been dormant too long, but they are needed. They've been dormant too long. Come on, pray. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Come on here, children. Pray. Heliosante. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can't tell me I'm so cold. I'm not telling you. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can't tell me. Come on, push. Let me hear them symbols. Push. Out of your belly. Call forth an outpour. Come on here, Zion. Push in here. 
you will no longer be dormant. You will no longer be satisfied. I call the prophet out of you. I call the apostolic out of you. I call the intercessor out of you. Come on. Come on. Come on there. Come on. Come on. You got 30 seconds. Push. 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 Jerego. Now take 40 seconds, not another word in English. Speak in your heavenly language. Speak. Shepata. Shepeto. Shepeka. Shinekato. Come on, I'm waiting on you. Push. Shemamamandahoya. Shemamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamamam
Grants. I said Grants. I said Grants. I said Grants. I need somebody to praise God for money. Praise Him. Y'all ain't say, Paul. Paul. Hey, my Shia. Hallelujah. I know I can't lay hands on you because you outrank me. But I speak long life. Satisfied. Long life on you. I said long life on you. I said, oh. I said long life. And I crushed the wicked water. God said, I'm going to touch your body. He was wounded for your transgressions. God, I feel victory. I said, ha! I said, I feel victory. 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 I Every time somebody has a, a notion, some kind of concept, you get behind it and you push it. Sometimes without pay, sometimes without due recognition. And that's not wrong because that's your heart. And I know you're a servant. So this is no slap or shade or slack. I hope you continue to do that because I think you do a great job. Elder Dijon needs you. Quan needs you. Bishop Jefferson needs you. Whoever you serve. They all need you, and you do an incredible job. You really do. Period. However, comma. The Lamoshi and the Lalobohobaya. Rikajodokoshkadaya. The Lord would have me to say to Mashia that over the next nine months, going into the year 2024, that he needs you to carve out more time to specifically target you. I want to say something that is going to be really simple and I'm getting ready to let y'all go. It's going to be very simple, but I need you to hear this. God said, now is your time. It is your time. I am not telling you not to help anybody else. But what I am telling you is do not help anybody else above what you do for yourself. You hear that? Y'all, y'all drag me out of that. Come on, drag, drag me out of that. I, I want you, I, I want you to know that God is getting ready to release an anointing on your life 
that is going to quicken every, the word quicken just means bring back the life. Can I, can I, can I pause on this prophecy for a teachable moment? You know, y'all know how, y'all know how, y'all know how, how, you know, we call that quickening. That's not quickening. That's the consequence of quickening. You know what I'm saying? See, the word, that's why the Bible said God coming back to judge the quick and the dead. The word quick means alive. So when you quick in, it means something in you that was dead comes back to life. Have you ever seen somebody use, what is those, those things called? Defibrillators, that's what it's called? Right? So they say clear and then they shock you. Right? The jump isn't the shock. The jump is the consequence of the shock. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hobashaya. So when I, Mohoshia Bahaya, so when my physical body responds, that's not quickening. That's because something alive came in me, so my body reacts. God said, every dream and you get ready to come alive. How? Pasha. How? Even then, I said, every dream. Touch two people and tell them every dream in you is coming alive. That's right. Come on. I better quit. I need a praise in this house. Hey, I need a praise in this house. Shout, scream, Shabbat. Shout, scream, Shabbat. I said, open your mouth. Shout, scream, Shabbat. may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I gotta let you go. Thank you for staying full full service. Thank you for staying full full service. Hallelujah. On your way down to your seat, just tell your neighbor there's a consequence coming to your house. There's a consequence. Hmm. He was wounded. That's the condition. By his stripes, that's the consequence. How? 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 Touch five people and tell them there's a consequence. There's a consequence. There's a consequence. Condition, but that's the con- I'm sorry. Consequences are coming. All right, I quit. I said consequences are coming. I'm done. You may be seated. We're getting ready to leave here. God bless you. You may be seated. (laughs) My God. Please be seated.
I know we gotta go. You don't know my story. shoulder and tell them good news is coming to your house. Some of y'all tap the wrong neighbor. Tell your neighbor good news is coming to your house. Good news coming to my house. Good news coming to my house. Good news. I said good news. Take it up. Come on. Say good news. Some of y'all 
now before the sun go down. Hey! Ooh. He's gonna give you a Sabbath miracle. The Sabbath was for rest. God said, I've done the first part. Now I'm gonna give you the rest of it. resources you need to do whatever you got to do God's already got it and the promise is that the glory of the latter house shall be greater than that of the former I'm not trying to stir you but before I go to my seat I'm just grateful for one other thing and it is this if I can share it with you in fact I would like to invite you to share it with me while I share it with you will you do that for me can you share it with somebody as I share it with you? You don't even have to turn all the way around, but just, just nudge them or wave at them if they're not right next to you. But make contact with somebody to be a witness and just tell them, say, neighbor, tell them, I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the kabod. shall be revealed in you. Tell three people there's a weight of glory coming out of you. God, I want you to get the glory. I know it's not a Friday night, but I, but I want them to get the glory. Say, Lord, I want you. Get, 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 get the glory in the name of Jesus. That's why I pray to you. And I lift you up. And I magnify your name. That's why my That my heart is filled with prayer. Yeah. And that's why my heart is filled with prayer. And if it's I, anybody besides me is grateful today.
receive an offering. I want to create an opportunity to sow a seed as the Lord sanctifies our hearts today. Hallelujah to God. If y'all know that, can you help me sing it one time? Receive. It's real easy. his conference budget. You understand? Yeah. Amen? Because it costs, y'all. Man, him and I, we were planning tips and out for it, I think a couple years ago. 
man, and and I'm not tripping because this is business. I get it. But folks really be charging like three thousand dollars a night for this sanctuary. Yeah. And all we want to do is gather people together to empower them. And if we pay three thousand dollars for the sanctuary, plus bring in sound and bring in musicians and bring in free, how are we gonna do that? Unless we got people that God touches their hearts to undergird the budget. You know what I'm telling you? So this is what I want to do. I love him and I respect him and I honor him. I apologize for keeping you all a little later, but God really, God really has been dwelling here at, at our core. And so this is what I want to do. I believe if we raise $1,500 in this, in this moment, to help him get a little closer. He got to pay musicians. Amen. Amen. He got to pay for the building. You know, which I'm not, you know, I'm not, you know, you understand what I'm saying. He got to pay. I don't know what else he got to pay because I know he got to pay a lot. He got to pay for sound. Any of y'all sound techs been blessed? But I bet y'all ain't been blessed enough to do this for free. Yeah. <laughs> Any of y'all musicians that been playing all week, y'all been blessed? But y'all ain't been blessed enough to play for free. He said, man, he said no with a smile. Emmanuel was like, yeah, no. <laughs> so I don't have any tricks. I don't have any gimmicks. I'm, go, I, I'm not prophesying to get, you know, you to do anything. I'm just letting you know. Y'all, I want to help him out. Because he's a young man. And, I'm, you know, he's, he's, he's not a little boy. I'm not saying young man like he's significantly younger than me. I'm just saying that he's a young man and he's doing a phenomenal thing. He's doing a phenomenal thing. And I'm praying. I, 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 I want to say, well, I, well, let me, well, I'm going to say, I, typically people say this after they get the money. But, I mean, if, if you're offended, then you're offended. But I want to say this for those of you who are from Charleston. Um, I, I want you, I, I, I want you to be encouraged to encourage other people to be more intentional about supporting because when I glanced over the live I mean uh, Wednesday night Thursday night um, Thursday night I mean Friday night it was a phenomenal crowd but I didn't see a lot of Charleston people and I'll be trying to figure out at, at one of my tips conferences a couple of musicians from Charleston they were in the hallway they were like Wilson always bringing he bringing sound tech he bringing musicians he bringing and I'm like, because if the only time you show up is when I invite you to do something, I'm not going to invite you to do that. You understand what I'm saying? If I don't walk around here and I'm booked all the time, I don't walk around like I'm a star. Check two, one. Is this my phone or no? I don't. I don't walk around like I'm a star. Amen. And so, you know, we, we definitely got to be better. But, man, this has been an incredible conference so far. It's been a tremendous conference. I know tonight is going to be just amazing. So listen, so I, I want to encourage, I'm not trying to put anybody on the spot at all, but just very quickly, may I have my phone, Daquan? Hear me, everybody that can, I'm not going to auction God off, but if you're in this room and if you can trust God with a $200 seed, I want you to, thank you, I want you to stand on your feet, thank you, I got, all right, is that four, I can't, four, thank you, all right, Bishop Jetter is sowing four, thank you, Bishop Jetter, amen. Anybody else going to give that $200 seed? Two hundred or more. Okay, you, you stand in two. All right, thank you. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight. Anybody else giving two hundred? Amen. I think there are about three more of you in this room that can trust the Lord with that two hundred dollars. I don't have, I don't have any tricks, y'all. We just want to be a blessing. That's all. That's all. I'm going to sow that $200 seed today. I believe in what Elder Dijon is doing, and I'm going to sow. I'm going to trust him. Who are you? Who are you? Even if you got to move things around, amen. I want you to give. I want you to give. Amen. All right, listen, everybody in this room that can sow a seed of $71, I want you to stand on your feet. If you can sow a seed of 71 amen. I want you to thank you, Pastor Aaron. Those who are going to give already, I want you to go ahead and come. You can start coming. And I want somebody counting. I know that's old school, but I want y'all counting because I want to make sure. Amen. Even if you're giving electronically, if you don't mind, will you still come and by faith, Shekinah, come a little. There you go. 
Amen. We don't give to be seen, but we should be seen giving. Those of you who are watching online, I want you to get something that you've been blessed through this worship. Amen. Through the exaltation, through the word, whatever it is, I want you to give. Amen. Thank you again, Pastor Hicks. Amen. You can give via Cash App, via Zale. Thank you, Bishop Elect. faster. Count like you count millions of dollars. Count it, count it in Jesus' name. Count it, count it. Take a bite, take a bite, take a bite. Kelly, which number is you showing me? You don't be, why are you shaking? <laughs> All right. Listen, we are almost there. So everybody that has not yet given I want you to get the closest thing you've got to that $71, and I want you to come. Whatever it is, the closest thing you've got. Amen. Quickly, come on. Amen. This is beautiful. Come on. Everybody, give something. Thank you. I, I thank our four musicians that give. The rest of y'all, y'all giving to? All right. Amen. Got cash up? Yeah. Okay. Amen. Has everyone given something? Even if it's only $5, come on, just give something. Walk so I know you give. Amen. Somebody don't have legs. That's right. It don't matter what it is. That widow only had, what, one or two pennies. Amen. everyone given? It's so good to see Pastor Jason Richardson. Amen. It came in from Triumphant Church in Charleston. On my way to my seat, I want to just lift this up one last time and I'm moving. Come on, let's take the roof off. All praises be saved. them. Amen. Amen. Thank God once again. Amen. For Bishop Gardner, Apostle Jetta, 
Amen. Pastor Hicks, Pastor Richardson, amen. Uh, over, Bishop elect uh, Tobert, amen. Everybody that's under the sound of our voice, we thank God for all of you guys, amen. We can stand. We're going out of this place until we meet again. Father, we thank you for what our ears have heard, our hearts have felt. We pray, God, that you would be with us, keep us, protect us, and bring us back at the appointed hour until we meet again. May the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide between these and your people, henceforth, now, and forevermore. Let the church say, Amen.